continuing story of Peyton Place. Dorothy Malone as Constance McKenzie. Ed Nelson as Michael Rossi. Mia Farrell as Allison McKenzie. Ryan O'Neill as Rodney Harrington. Barbara Parkins as Betty Anderson. Tim O'Connor as Elliot Carson. Christopher Connolly as Norman Harrington. The court will rise. In the case of the People versus Rodney Harrington, the child Kim Schuster has testified that she saw Rodney throw a fisherman's gaffing hook at Joe Chernak. Now, District Attorney John Fowler is ready to call another witness. The witness he hopes will secure his case. Stella Chernak to the stand. swear that the testimony you are about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. State your name, please. Stella Chernick. Miss Chernick, would you state your relationship with the deceased Joseph Chernick? I'm his sister. I was his sister. Are you acquainted with the defendant, Rodney Harrington? We met. Do you recall your first meeting with him? Yes. When was it? On the same day that Joey died. And where did this encounter take place? At our house. He came looking for my brother. Was your brother at home? No. Did you tell this to the defendant? I told him. What did he say? He wanted to know where Joey was. I told him I didn't know. He said, will you give Joe a message for me? You tell him I'm looking for him. He didn't just say it. You could see that he's angry. Objection. The answer is the conclusion of the witness. I move that the answer be stricken from the record. Objection sustained. The answer will be stricken from the record. Miss Chernak. No opinions or conclusions, please. Now, did the defendant give you a specific reason for wanting to see your brother? Yes, he did. He said that his brother Norman had a fight with Joey over a girl that Joey used to go with. Would you please tell us the name of that girl? Her name is Rita Jacks. I said to him, well, isn't this your brother's business, not yours? But he didn't see it that way. Well, Miss Chernock, is this an assumption on your part or an actual statement made by the defendant? His actual statement was, tell your brother that I'm going to get him. Right, take it easy. I said to him, is this a threat? He said, that's just what it is. And was this the end of your conversation? No. He said one thing more. He said, tell your brother, when I catch up with him, I'm going to finish him. I'm going to kill him. That's a lie! That's a lie! 
is a lie. I never said that. That's a lie. That's not the truth. You're not telling the truth. The defendant will preserve order. That's a lie. Order. That's a lie. That's, order. that's a lie. Order in the court. That's a lie. That's a lie. That's a lie. You're lying. The defendant will preserve order. Lying. Cross-examined. Rodney, did you say anything that could be taken to constitute a threat? No. She even asked me. What? She asked me if I was threatening him. I said, of course not. Stephen. Do something. Break her down somehow. Does the defense wish to ask for a recess? No, Your Honor. Ms. Chenock, I didn't hear you mention the time at which your conversation with Rodney allegedly took place. It was lunchtime. Could you be more specific? Maybe 12, a little after. Where did you talk? Was it outside the house, or did Rodney come inside? He came in. Did he force his way in? No. Then this was at your invitation. That's right. Do you remember what Rodney was wearing? I think it was, uh, slacks and a shirt. You think? I'm sure. What color? Light. Light what? Brown? Would you please be more responsive? Trying, I can't recall. It was uh, a light shade. Did he have on a jacket? No. So you invited him to come in and sit down? No. Well, isn't that what you just said? We didn't sit. We stood. Where? In the living room. You were alone in the house. That's right. Neither of your parents was present. That's right. So there were no witnesses to the conversation. It's just your word against his. In fact, there wasn't even a witness to Rodney's presence. Dr. Rossi was there. He saw it. Did Dr. Rossi hear any of the conversation? No, he didn't. Dr. Rossi came in as Mr. Harrington went out the door. You're sure Dr. Rossi heard nothing? He's not an eavesdropper. Did you tell Dr. Rossi about this threat to your brother? No, I didn't. Why didn't you? I didn't think I should. No further questions. The witness may step down. The people may continue. Your Honor, the people rest. Does the defense wish to present any evidence? Put me on the stand. You can't leave it at that. Ted, in view of Miss Jernak's testimony, shouldn't we put her on the stand? Her testimony is all the more reason to stick to our original plan. The defense also rests, Your Honor. The defendant will rise. It appears to me the offense in the complaint to wit the murder of Joseph Chernock has been committed and there is sufficient cause to believe the name Rodney Harrington is guilty thereof. And I hereby order Rodney Harrington be held to answer same. Rodney Harrington, you are hereby ordered to appear before the Superior Court in the County of Peyton on Wednesday, the 18th at 9 a.m. Bail is continued in the present amount. Court is adjourned.
Dad, didn't you have any idea they were going to put that Chernak girl on the stand? I didn't, Leslie. There was no way I could know. The district attorney's office wouldn't release the names of the witnesses, Mr. Harrington. In this state, there was no way we could get them legally. Now maybe you can see why I wanted this herd in another county. No, Dad, please. Right. I don't understand it. Well, I do. They've got my son marked for the scapegoat. Oh, I've got to call Martin Dayton. All right, but when you're through, I want to talk to you. Ron, there's no more time for idealism. I'm going to petition for this case to be tried somewhere else. No. Rod. We can talk about that later, Mr. Harrington. There's a lot of ground to cover. We have a lot of work to do. All right. Dad. Are you positive you didn't say anything that remotely resembled her testimony? Look, I'm on your side. I never said anything like that. Hey, Rod. Rod, I... go ahead. Never mind, I'll talk to you later. I want you to take a ride with me. Where? To the wharf. What did Martin Payton have to say? Martin Payton was disappointed, of course, as we all are. And what instructions did he give you? He wanted to see a transcript of the hearing. Who's running this case? We are, together. We? Does that include Martin Payton? I mean, I know that I'm paying you to handle this case, but the old man pays you a great deal of money to do his bidding. Oh, I'm sorry if I bore you with these unpleasant facts. But after what happened this morning, I want some answers out of you. Leslie! What would you do if your boss, Martin Payton, instructed you to let Rodney's defense be handled in such a way that he be found guilty as charged? Oh, I know you wouldn't be obvious about it. You're not a fool, but you could accommodate that kind of instruction from Mr. Payton, couldn't you? Well, that is ridiculous. Don't tell me it's ridiculous. I talked to your employer. I saw and felt and know the hate he feels for me. He condemned Rod for being my son, Harrington. Don't tell me it's ridiculous. If he hasn't found it as a way to punish me, he soon will. Leslie, I would not consider it for a moment. You mean because it would be unethical? Of course it would be unethical. And immoral, and illegal. The same way it was unethical for you to take on Martin Payton as a client while you were representing me, as long as acting as trustee for my sons? It was not unethical. It was a perfectly proper, business-like thing to do. I took two clients, both legitimate. You represent me and my sons. You also represent Martin Payton. Martin Payton would do anything to destroy and punish me and my sons. You know that. You've always known that. If that doesn't give you a conflict of interest, I don't know what does. I thought it over for a long time before I took on Martin Payton's business. I, I also discussed it with Matt Swain. I was the one you should have discussed it with. I was the one you should have informed. Ethically, you should have given me the choice to decide whether I wanted you to continue representing me and my sons along with Martin Payton. And my answer would have been no, and you know it. And I know for a fact that if you'd asked Matt Swain's opinion, instead of discussing it with him, you'd have gotten the same answer. And one thing more, Ted. I know that Fowler's office wouldn't identify their witnesses, but it was your job to find out who they were. Isn't that what you're paid to do? To anticipate what the prosecution might have? The Chernock girl statement was a shock to all of us. No one could have anticipated it. And I suggest you direct your energetic anger to something else. Someone else. Mm -hmm.